Now, one of the real puzzles about dark energy is that, at the moment, our understanding is that dark energy and dark matter are, to within a factor of three or so, the same in their contribution to the overall universe. But dark energy gets bigger as the universe gets larger, whereas dark matter as effect gets smaller as things get carried further apart. So at general, at any time in the history of the universe, the two should be wildly different. So it's, it's struck many people as a real puzzle that these two things, which seemingly have rather different origins and bases, should at this particular instant that we're around asking questions have about the same size to a factor of two or three, and aren't, for example, 100 orders of magnitude, one bigger or one smaller, which they will be for most of the evolution of the universe. So we've got Lawrence Krauss back here again to uh, tell us a bit about this coincidence. Is this a real problem? It's a, it's a huge problem. I will. I have to correct you, though. Dark energy doesn't get bigger, at least if it's if it's the kind of dark energy we think. It remains constant. The energy density of matter gets smaller. The energy density... Well, the energy density gets bigger, the but the universe gets bigger, so there's yeah, more the of it. Yeah, total energy gets bigger, yes, absolutely. What, 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 I, as a theorist, I tend to think in terms of energy density, because it's it's what you plug into Einstein's equation. But it becomes equations. more dominant. Omega oh, oh. cosmological oh. constant or whatever becomes bigger. In the far bigger. future, yeah. This is the only... T if, if This is the only time in the history of the universe if the dark energy is constant, which those two numbers were even remotely close. And the, it's a real problem. It's driven... I would say many theorists literally crazy, because it it, it why should 13.8 billion years after the Big Bang, those two numbers be close? It was uh, there's no there's nothing special about the current time. In fact, it's very anti-Copernican. Uh, it's the ultimate. You know, we we live in a random location in a, in a, in a universe with nothing special. There's nothing. There's no combination of fundamental parameters that makes 13.8 billion years very special. Yet, if this is right, it's those two energy densities crossed a few billion years ago and are, are within a factor of three or so today. And that that's that is is completely inexplicable. And, and in fact that's only one of the, the second thing that's completely inexplicable about it. The energy scale of dark energy is not natural. It's it's 120 orders of magnitude smaller than we would have naively predicted. Uh, based on, or even 60 orders magnitude smaller than we would have predicted from based on any fundamental particle physics, and and to be self-serving, which you can edit out if you yes. want, go for um, it. When it, when it looked to some of us theorists like the only way to make a universe sensible was to have dark, have a cosmological constant, have dark energy, and when I first began to prose it, it was mostly, I certainly didn't believe it. No one else did. Uh, but we proposed it as a way to fit everything together. But mostly it was to point out that something must be wrong, because surely there couldn't be such an energy empty space. So uh, I was very happy to propose it. As I say, no one believed it. And then Brian went ahead and discovered it. So and that was in 1995. Yeah. Now, uh, at that time, there was the notion of quintessence that uh, Paul Steinhardt also proposed in 1995, the same basic idea that something like dark energy must be there. And his whole idea of quintessence is to try to make it be not such an unusual value. Maybe you could uh, elaborate well, for I us. would, uh, you know, the point is, <coughs> the, interesting, the, the interesting thing is quintessence, you might argue that this energy and em empty space is very ugly because it's, it appears to be very small. And why should there be a coincidence today? And we'll, and we'll get to that. The, the amazing thing about quintessence is it has all of that ugliness plus more ugliness. Okay. Because... So, so what is so the describe the quintessence? Is the idea that basically yeah. what we're measuring today is not that different than what we what happened during inflation. It's just an energy in some field that's stuck there. So now, it's a field that behaves a bit more like matter. So it gets diluted as well, the universe it's not gets matter. bigger. So no, no, it's, an, it's like it's like the inflaton field. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a field that gets an expectation value throughout energy space, all of space, which momentarily gives energy in empty space, but it's not a fundamental energy of empty space. Now, in order. <laughs> What, what's always bothering me about quintessence and is, is that any reasonable model of quintessence, if it's going to produce inflation like we see today, it will produce something that is basically completely indistinguishable from a cosmological constant, from the energy of empty space. So there's no observational way to tell the difference. The only way you could tell the difference is somehow if that field were changing over time, if it had a potential which was dipped and that field was changing, and then you'd, the, the so-called equation of state of that field would be different than a cosmological constant. And, and, it, and there's been a host of work in that regard. And I view it as, as sort of make work for graduate students to get PhD theses because the, the, the fine-tuning that's, that's required for that to happen is ridiculous. <laughs> Moreover, 
it, it doesn't resolve the really fundamental problem. In particle physics, before the discovery of dark energy, uh, 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 everyone would have said, in fact, we all were able to go to bed at night by assuming the energy of empty space is zero. Quantum mechanics says empty space should have energy. It should have lots of energy. As I say, in general, 120 orders of magnitude more than what we measure. We all assumed that some symmetry of nature would make it precisely zero because that's a natural value. If the if what, what Brian has measured is 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 a truly an energy of empty space, it's it's 120 orders of magnitude smaller than we'd naively expect, but it's not zero. And that is a a problem of unprecedented proportion in, in physics. But it may not be the ultimate energy of empty space. In order to, it may be that empty space ultimately has energy zero. But that would require a solution of this cosmological constant problem. It would re require a solution we don't have. What cancels out the energy of all these other fields that makes it precisely zero? For quintessence to be relevant, you have to first solve the cosmological constant problem. You first have to invent some new thing that makes the energy of everything else precisely zero, and then add some unbelievably contrived field which has very small energy, and moreover is changing. It's so crazy that I know it's wrong, and I will tell you that, in fact, if I will make a prediction now, and, and whether there may be students in 2130 that are still watching this MOOC, I don't know. Uh, hopefully there'll be better ones by then. But, uh, oh, not. Uh, no no <laughs> not, it's impossible, right, Brian? But the only sensible kind of energy of empty space that isn't a cosmological constant is one that looks just like it, and therefore, for, since I first proposed it and since it was measured, even after that, I would argue that the equation of state W, this equation of state parameter, is precisely minus one. And although we've got to go out and measure it, and it's important to continue to do that, I would argue that we won't see any deviations from minus one because the, really the most likely candidate for the energy of empty space is precisely the energy of empty space. Any of these other models are ugly squared. So... Let's just look at that. So we have the idea of Einstein's cosmological constant, mm -hmm. that that is just the ground state energy mm -hmm. of the universe, uh -huh. and it's there, and we're stuck with it. We're stuck with it. That's fine. That's one idea. We have the idea of this field, which you're arguing is almost guaranteed to have an expectation value, an equation state, which is so close to being that what we expect from... Einstein's cosmological constant. Well, it would just, I would expect it would be constant. It would be like the inflation in the early universe. That you wouldn't expect it to start changing. If it's there, if it's yep. stuck, why start changing after 10 to the 10th years and not 10 to the 10th to the 10th years? Right. But it does mean, and maybe this is where you're going and I don't like to anticipate, it does mean, I, I would argue there's a reasonable likelihood that that's the case. It really is some field stuck in some unstable state, which means it's possible at some time in the future that a phase transition could be completed which, by the way, could change the nature of everything. And everything that we see in the universe could disappear. Matter could be unstable, become unstable. Proton, all the particles we know of in nature could change. And the universe will really, for all intents and purposes, end as far as life is concerned. That's a possibility. 